Our lesson today is entitled Spiritual Blessings in Jesus Christ and it's found in the letter to the church at Ephesus chapter 1 verses 3 through 14. This is Sunday School Lesson for December the 4th, 2022 and our key verse is found in the 5th and 6th verses of the text and it reads as follows having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his, his will to the praise and glory of his grace wherein he hath made us accepted and beloved again we're speaking about spiritual blessings in Jesus Christ we are the chosen the heirs of his promise. Amen. So the aim of this lesson is to understand Paul's explanation of being adopted by God through Jesus Christ and express humility at God's affirmation of our worthiness and praise God for the remarkable gift of his adoption of us through Jesus Christ. This is my YouTube channel. I ask you to please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. You'll get my lessons automatically like my lessons, I give you any value, like my lessons, share my lessons, leave me comments, all of these things continue to encourage me to share this word of God with you. Amen. As each week I do prepare some measure of background, uh, this lesson is interesting because we I, did, I delivered this lesson to you on November the 6th and it was uh, under a different heading but the same text. Uh, again, each week I do prepare some background. Background is very similar to what I gave you last time, but the lesson text is quite different. I'm going to use the Amplifier that's still living in the new living that I did last time. Let me find some value in what God has put on my heart to share with you this week. Amen. So this whole concept of spiritual blessings refers to uh, the conceivable gifts of redemption that Christians receive by being united with, with Jesus. That's as freedom, that's glory and grace and life and love and newness and peace and promise and purpose and reconciliation, redemption and salvation and sanctification and victory and on and on and on as we'll learn along our journey today that we receive gifts, spiritual blessings because of our relationship with Jesus. Amen. So like always, I'd like to start this lesson in the beginning. I think this lesson determines and needs to be framed from the beginning because that's why we were chosen. We were chosen before the beginning of, of, uh, of man. Amen. So be, before God made creation, again, I shared that we were, we were, we were selected. But on day one, God made the heaven, made the earth and, and time and space and time and light. And he made the atmosphere, the firmaments and all that. And, and he made the land and the plants and he, and he made the moon and the sun and the stars. And he flung them into the atmosphere, right? And on this earth, he would, he would just implant the, the, the seas and the living creatures. And on that sixth day of creation, we all know the story of creation. That God will make the land animals and he would ultimately make this man as well. Amen. And the book of Genesis teaches that God took the dust from the ground and shaped man and blew into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living soul. God animated this lump of clay and human beings are different from every animals that God had created. He created man in his own image. Our bodies were designed with the ability to pass on to the next generation this program information required to create another, another person. God made, uh, this is the man that God had made. That is us created in the very image of all mighty God. Amen. And God will take this lump of clay that God will, will take the dust of the ground and God will form man from the dust of the ground and breathe into his nostrils, that ruach, 
that, that breath of life and man became a, a living soul that, yeah, his soul preexisted before this time, but God would infuse that soul into that lump of clay. And that soul became just like God at this moment. Amen. That God would give this man the same attributes that he has, that that, that that he has his triumphness, that he has three components to who God, the Father, the, the Word, baby, made flesh in the Holy Spirit, that, that Shekinah, all those are, are representative of, of who God is, that God is, is, is three and one, and we are the same. That, that, that this lump of clay that, that now has a, a spirit, that, that God, that, that has that God consciousness, that God, that spirit that lived on before, right? And that, and that body, the body, that lump of clay, and the soul, that intellect, that, that we would interact with others, we would interact with God as well. But the, this is how God made us the triune man, the triune God. Amen. And God would also make this Adam and Eve. And then here we would have at this moment what he would make this man and this woman. It was an uh, act of love because he, 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 he loved what he had made. And he had made this man. And, and be, before the foundation of the world, he would, he would select this Adam and Eve before the beginning. Our souls are chosen in the counsel of God from eternity. God knows all that will happen on this planet. God knows all that will happen from the beginning to eternity as well. Amen. God chose Adam's soul first. That he made that lump of clay, but he would infuse that soul. And he put man and the woman in the garden. He would choose Eve, that being second. And Adam's relation with God would ultimately be severed. He gave the man and the woman instructions to do thus and so in the garden, but he also gave them the ability to make their own decisions. God could have made them like robots, and he would only do what he wanted them to be do, but because of their sin, that that relation was severed, and God would ultimately know that he would need to send a redeemer, that Jesus, and he would be the one that would come to restore this broken and fractured and severed relationship. Next one. That God gave this man and woman he gave them life, but he also gave them intellect and he gave them the ability to, to have this free will. And that's the ability to act in one's own discretion that, that, that he told them do not eat from the fruit of the tree, but they th thought it was in their best interest because Satan had deceived them and he told them that it was good for you, the good to eat, and God, you, God just don't want you to be like him. God's in control of all aspects of humanity. All, however, he did give man the ability to choose good and choose evil, and Adam and Eve would choose the evil and not choose what God required of them. Amen. That we were all part of God's plan, that it was a predestined plan, it was a, a, that he had a, a particular plan and particular fate and a particular purpose for us, right? That God is all knowing of all aspects of humanity. He know, also knows who will choose him and who will not choose him. That even before he had created man, that he had set us all these things in motion. God had predestined us. Some folks think that that's a little crazy, but, but, but God is just like any, I mean, we are just like God. That there is, we're made in his image. God predestined what you and I will do in this life, and God will know who will choose him and who will not. Next one. But this whole concept of predestined, some people think that, well, why would God just choose you and then you don't even have the ability to do? Yes, you do. You have the ability to choose. It's just like a, and I, and I, and I share with you the, the last time I taught this lesson that, that, that here's a, Here's an uh, architect, that an architect would build a house. And in and, 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 and building that house, he predestined what he's going to do, that he would have, the, the end of the day, that house. 
and he would build the kind of outside, what kind of brick, what kind of color, and what kind of wood, and what kind of trim, and, and inside what kind of carpet, and what kind of drapes, and what kind of uh, um, uh, molding he would have, or crown molding, or, or base molding, that, that he would kind of... Uh, appliances that he would put into this house and what kind of hardware that he would put into the house and what kind of plumbing and and all aspects of his house was predetermined predestined and that's what that's what a, a, a builder does and it, it, the, 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 before you build a house all access of, of production is predetermined construction is predetermined so at the end of the day at the end of the day the building is Build according to the conceptual design the one who is the builder and God is the builder of humanity and God predestined and predetermined us in our life it's important to understand that God is in control and God has set it all in motion Amen. and even with the humanity that God knew at creation. God knew that he would have to select out a people. God knew that he would have to, that this people would, would ultimately fail him. And he, and he knew that this people would, would, would ultimately even, they took him out of a wilderness and into, I mean, out of, out of uh, captivity into a wilderness that he would give them a, the judges and he would, and then they, they would not like the judges, he would give them kings like they wanted, but they were continually to fail and then they were continually, to continually fail and he would ultimately have to send them into captivity and, uh, and ultimately he, he knew that, that 483 years after they, they would go into this captivity that, the, that Jesus would be born. That he knew that 400 years that he would stop talking to his people because he was done with them. But also God knew that that Jesus would come and he would be the sacrificial lamb. That he knew that Jesus would, 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 would take, would be obedient all the way to the cross. And God knew that he set in motion eternity. But ultimately that this man, this failed man, this failed woman, this failed humanity would choose, those who would choose him at the end of days will go into eternity with him. God set it all in motion for us all. Amen. And in the fullness of time, in the fullness of time, God even knows when you'll be born, and God also knows when you will die. Amen. And how did we get here in Ephesians chapter 1? Let's talk about this book and to talk about the writer of the book and then we'll jump into this lesson amen and Saul of Tarsus is the, the writer of this book and the, and the art uh, um, uh, this this book of Ephesians this letter he would write to the church at Ephesus that that he was a zealous persecutor of the first century church and his goal was to stamp out this Christian sect the Saul of Tarsus ultimately his name would be changed to Apostle Paul because of this dramatic interaction that he would have with Jesus on the road to Damascus, changing his condition, changing his persona, changing his 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 direction. God knew that this man would 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 accept the the path that he would send him on. When this Jesus, when he would have this encounter with Jesus, God is in control of all aspects of our life, even this one Saul of Tarsus. The Apostle Paul, the writer of this letter we're sharing today. This letter was no doubt written by him. It was written about 32 AD. It was almost 30 years after, uh, or around 30 years after Jesus has gone to the cross, being obedient to the Father. And 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 uh, and, and and Paul wanted the readers to know that it's only because of the mercies of God that we're saved, we're saved by this grace through faith, that even that is a gift of God. And even Paul wanted to prepare a Christian that we should walk in 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 uh in um in, in faith and, and walk being protected because of the principalities and powers and the rules of this dark age and, and he would equip us just like God would give us these uh these uh the ability to to share uh, to, to protect ourselves against the principalities and powers and the rules of this dark age. God is in control of all aspects of our life. And even with this Apostle Paul, he gave us tools that we will be victorious in this lifetime. That is what God wants for us. And that's what Paul wanted to share with us. 
along our journey today. Well, that is our background. Let's move on into the Sunday School lesson. Amen. So this introduction, our our, our lesson began in verse 3, but I'll give you verses 1 and 2. This is an introduction to this letter that Paul would write to this church at Ephesus. And here Paul writes as this introduction or this greeting to those folks that Paul, he says who he is, I'm an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God to God's holy people in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus. And he says, verse two, grace and peace. That is those spiritual gifts that, that, he, that he says that we all receive to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, last time I taught this lesson, I taught it in NIV. Today, I'm gonna to do something different. I'm gonna go into the Amplified. We'll use the Amplified. I think it gives us the, the perspective that what we want today, last time it's about being chosen, this time it's about those spiritual blessings, so we will move and, and, and navigate into the uh, the Amplified this, this week. And the Amplified for the same text reads that Paul, an apostle, a special messenger, personally chosen uh, representative of Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed by the will of God, that is his purpose and choice that that Paul is saying that who he is that he is a a chosen representative by Jesus to speak to these folks amen so our lesson this week is entitled spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus and and let's move on and now in Ephesians chapter 1 and verses 3 through 14 we'll go let's like I said we'll we'll navigate through the amplified this week and we'll begin here in verse uh, 3 and 4. And I believe that I share with you before and I share with you now that this is a beautiful work of poetry. And if you have an opportunity <laughs> to take this lesson and read this text from 3 to 14 in its entirety by itself, it is a, a, a work of art. It's poetry that God always speaks about us. And here, we write here in, in verse 3 of the text, it says, Blessed and worthy of praise be God the Father uh, of our Lord Jesus Christ, <clears throat> who has blessed us in every spiritual blessing. Again, spiritual blessing is our heading in, in every heavenly realm in Christ. In verse 4, and just as in his love. He did it all because he loved us, and in his love that he chose us in Christ, actually selected us from for himself as his own before the foundation of the world so i share with you the background to give you some perspective that we were chosen before the foundation of the world that we would be holy that is we be consecrated we set apart we have a certain purpose that we've driven and we have a plan for our life that would be blameless in his sight and he did it all in love because he loved us for the foundation of the earth. Amen. I'll share with you in that background that just like Adam, he chose us. He, he chose our soul before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. That, that he did not adopt us. He did not choose us. He did not adopt us into his family because we were blameless. That we had some, some specialness about ourselves. No. He chose us that that we might become holy and blameless, that we would choose that free will. We would execute the free free will that we would have by choosing him back. Next one. Almighty God knew that our free will would cause man to make horrible decisions. God knew that we would sin that he would send Jesus, that Redeemer. I share with you in Genesis 315 that he had already purposed in his mind that he knew with the sin of Adam that he would have to send one who would come back to restore that relationship back to him. It was done by his grace, by in love, his unmerited favor for his creation, man. Amen. Next slide.
God pick you. Verses 4b and, and 6. Spiritual blessing. And verses 7 and 8 of our text. That in him, in this Jesus. And, and the, the, the spiritual blessings that we have are, are because of Jesus. That, that we have the riches of God's grace because of him. That we have this redemption. That is our deliverance and salvation that in him through his blood which he paid the pilling for our sin that resulted in our forgiveness and complete pardon from sin in accordance with the riches of his grace and in him he lavished upon us all the wisdom and understanding all of these practical insights that we have that in him that we have these spiritual blessings that's what our lesson is about move on about these lessons that he would give us as part of those fruits and gifts of the spirit amen in him we have wisdom in him we have understanding in him we have the right judgment and courage and knowledge and piety and reverence because of who he is and who he is to us the apostle paul writing to the church at Ephesus but writing to us today that we would understand who we are in him Amen. these spiritual blessings in verses 9 and 10 that, that in him he made known to us the mysteries of his will according to his good pleasure which he purchased in Christ that God had purposed and framed and knew in the beginning of time that he that he knew that there would be mysteries that we would have to understand but he he purchased us in Christ in verse 10 and with regards to fulfillment of the times that is the end of history the climax of ages I shared with you last week that that God has set it up that the thread that run from Genesis all the way through Je Revelation is about Jesus and to bring all things together in Christ, both things that are in heaven and things that are on earth. Verses 9 and 10 of our text. They were not done by accident. It wasn't just by happenstance that these things would come to the pass, it, that, that God had set the things in motion. And we receive these spiritual blessings so that we can live on our life in Him. Amen. That a part of our lesson today is verses 11 and 12 that that we were part of God's architecture that, that I shared with you before that 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 we when you start to build a building that you think about all of the components of, of, of a building and why are we uh, why is God less than man that that when man was set in, in motion all of the things that he was have to do to build a building he would think of it all the way down from the beginning all the way to the end when he would give the keys to the, that person would now inherit that building that he would have all of the thoughts in mind and why would God be any less that him here in him we also received an inheritance, a destiny, like that inheritance because we've been adopted into the family of God. We were claimed by God as his own, having been predestined, chosen and appointed beforehand that God knew who we were. God knew that we would choose him according to his purpose and will and works. We had this predestination, but he knew those who would choose him would not everything in agreement with his counsel, design and, and, and his will verse 12 so that we be the first to hope in Christ who first put our confidence in him as our Lord and Savior would exist to the praise of his glory that of the spiritual blessings that we receive we receive all of this because we are now in him that's how we receive these spiritual blessings let's move on next slide spiritual blessings and again the short and sweet that we're ending with our uh, our text in verses 13 and 14 the last two verses of our printed text that that you were chosen before the foundation of the earth that you were ultimately adopted into the family of God and given all of the rights of inheritance right in verses 13 and 14 of our, our text that in him that in Christ Jesus and you 
when you heard this word, that good news of your salvation, the result you believed in him. In him. That's why I, I share with you that the, the answer we were chosen, and yes, we had the free will, but in him we have to choose God back, choose Jesus. And, and, and in him, when we have received that, we heard the, the, the word of truth, that good news and salvation, and when we believed in him, we were stamped with the seal of the promise of the Holy Spirit, the one promised by Christ that he says, and I will not leave you comfortless, that, that one who's coming after me is another comforter, another God with us, as owned and protected by God. Verse 14, the Spirit is guaranteed the first installment, the pledge, the foretaste of our inheritance because we've adopted it and we have this redemption of God. We're purchased by this blood of Jesus. We are now in his possession, us believers, to the praise and glory of God that he set in motion that we are part of that plan, the architecture that he built that allows us to all fall, find our way back to God. Let's move on to close out this lesson. Amen. This lesson tells us about our blessings that because of our relationship with, with this Jesus, we got an amazing grace. This lesson tells us that we got some peace, right? The peace that surpasses all understanding that if we were adopted into the family of God, we chose Jesus. God chose us before the foundation of the world. He knew that we would choose him back. And we have God's favor. We were chosen. We, we were blessed. We were made worthy, blessed with every spiritual blessing. God selected us for his purpose. And, and anointed us and given us the power to, to execute anything that he chooses us to do. We are now holy. That, that is, we're consecrated. We're set apart from him. For We have a purpose driven that God has a purpose for our life. That now we're no longer guilty. We're blameless. We have redemption. That is, we've been deliverance of our salvation and through the blood of Jesus. We have this forgiveness. We now have a pardon for our sin. We have this wisdom. We have an understanding. We have salvation. We've been stamped with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit, the one promised by Christ. I'll share with you in the next up. And we are protected by God. We have an inheritance because we've been adopted because of this. Because of all of these things that I share with you, all that we learned along in our journey today, that we are God's purchased possession. That's an important part of why we receive these spiritual blessings because we are God's own purchase possession. The Word of God for the people of God. This being sealed, this being filled with the Spiritual blessing refers to all of the the, uh, the the conceivable gifts of redemption that Christians receive by being united with Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's let's look at a review of what we've learned along our journey. Amen. And here is a close off this lesson. Again, we are called. 